Good afternoon. Thank you all for being here. I see they have, have beer in the hallway, so I appreciate you taking the time to join us. My name is Derek Lagenzoff. I'm a product manager on the Azure OpenAI service, and I'm joined here by David. Yeah, hi folks, I'm David Smith. I'm a cloud advocate at Microsoft specializing in AI. And today I want to work with Derek to show you how you can customize a chat GBT experience. And so Derek, do you remember Clippy? I sure do. I was quite young when he came out, but definitely remember And him. who in the room remembers Clippy? All right, quite a lot of people. That's great because we're going to be doing a lot with Clippy right here. Because what I would like to do is to create a chat bot experience that kind of replicates that Clippy experience of being helpful and helping people to use Microsoft products specifically. And Derek, can we customize ChatGPT to do that kind of thing? We sure can, and I'd, I'd love to show you how. What are you going to use to do it? So I'm here today in the Azure OpenAI studio. Um, and one of the main differences I want to call out here, you besides you know, from using like chat.openai.com, is the ability to really kind of customize how the model behaves. And that's really what we're going to do here. So I went ahead and prepped a little bit for, uh, to build Clippy for David. And we have a few prompts. So let's, let's start just really simple. And you can see, um, you know, if, we, if we go back to this web page, we just have a very basic system message. And the system message essentially just gives some instructions for the model in terms of how it should behave, rules it should follow, and, and stuff like that. So what, what system message are you using here? So here we have, just have a really basic one. You're an AI system that helps people find information. But we can really tailor that to make it fit the, the Clippy brand for us. So, so let's start simple. And we're just going to paste this one that says, you're a Clippy. You're an AI assistant designed to help people answer questions about Microsoft products. And in a single sentence, that, you know, that describes uh, Clippy's purpose pretty well. So what we're going to do is we'll, we'll paste that here. We'll go ahead and save the changes so we can test it out. And now we're going to be ready to go. All right, and you can test it out right here within the Azure OpenAI um, service? We sure can. All right, well, let, let's start with the basics. Let's make sure the Clippy knows his name. Let's see. You said, hi, what's his name? And how does he respond? There we go. So he knows who, who it is already. OK, well, that's great. So now let's test out Clippy on some more knowledge about products that he should be knowledgeable about. Knowledgeable, knowledgeable about. <laughs> let's ask Clippy, let's say, how to build a table in Word where the column head headings are centered. Sure thing. So Derek's typing in here, build a table in Word where the column headings are centered. And let's see how Clippy responds. And we have an answer. OK, so let's see if we can scroll up a little bit to see what he said there. He said, open Microsoft Word, go to the Insert tab, click on Table. He's good, stepping through the process for building a table in Word, and that looks absolutely correct. That's always yep. something that I struggle with in Word, so that's handy. But Derek. I don't think this really has the Clippy personality. It's kind of a drier response. How can we make Clippy more fun and more Clippy-like when we develop our chatbot here? Sure, so quite simply, we can tell it what its personality should be. We started in the common way you would in a system message, giving it kind of a one-line description about what it is. But now we can go and add a lot more detail. Um, so I went ahead and, and typed some stuff earlier. And I, I was thinking about kind of Clippy's personality. So let, yeah, let's first define some personality traits. So let's say your Clippy is fun, helpful, and, and maybe a little bit quirky. Um, and probably most importantly, you know, Clippy loves all Microsoft products and loves helping users make the most out of them. And, and I'm sure everyone in this room can agree that puns are the highest form of comedy. So I figured we'd, we'd tell Clippy that he also loves puns um, and should include those in his response when appropriate. And, and just for the, the purpose of showing this, we'll also have him say ha whenever he, he delivers a pun for you. And then in addition to that, we're also just going to give a, a few simple sentences on the types of things that the Clippy will say. And this is, you can almost think of this as a simplified version of a few shot prompting. And for Clippy, it's fairly simple. But if you have like something a little more tailored, th this type of uh, examples can really help you get kind of the feel for, for your chatbot that you're looking for. So let's go ahead and, and copy that, and we'll, we'll paste it into the system okay, message. So you've got just plain English text instructions you're putting directly into the system prompt right here. And that's going to change Clippy's behavior. Exactly. All right, well, let's, let's try this out again. Uh, we're going to have to start from scratch again with that conversation. Every time we change the system prompt, we'll start again. But let's, let's do something a bit more interesting. Let's say, um, well, first of all, um, Clippy, I would like to start up a tacker truck business. What would be a funny name for my business? Let's do it. So what would be a good name? And Clippy suggests, how about Taco About Delicious? It's a pretty ha. good name. So look, it's got the ha there. So it's actually doing its, its pun thing. All right, that's good. Let's try something else. Um, how about, can you suggest five names uh, for tacos that I would sell? Yeah, let's give it a go. All right. 
And the thing, the Taco Fiesta, the Rolling Taco, Taco Express, okay, they're all decent taco names. One of the things about these demos is every time we run them, we get a different response. And sometimes they're funny, sometimes they're not so funny. These ones are just good. All right, but let's get to business, shall we? Let's ask Clippy uh, about how would I forecast sales for my tacos? And what I'm hoping here, of course, that Clippy will direct me towards Microsoft Excel and how to build a forecasting model. And what Clippy is actually doing here is giving some good advice, research competition, identify target market, estimate daily traffic, and so on and so forth. But this is quite generic advice. And what I was looking for here, Derek, was that Clippy would actually direct me to how to do this in Excel. Now, can I guide Clippy in that direction? Yeah, it's a good question. We would want him to really be tailored more to Microsoft products. And, and so we did give him some instructions that he's really designed to help people with Microsoft products. But I think we need to reinforce this behavior a little bit more. So now what we want to do is, is add in a few shot example What's That's, a few shot example, Derek? Um, so really, what it is is you know, these conversations with the ChatGPT model are kind of consist of, of user messages and assistant messages. So what we can do is, in the beginning of the conversation, we can actually add in a, like a, a sample user message and assistant message to kind of show, given a, a particular message, what kind of response we want to have. OK, great. Um, so actually, we can just scroll down here right below where we add the system message. And we'll add an example. And I went ahead and, and typed one up for us earlier. So we have a, a simple question like this around, you know, how can I forecast sales? Um, and what we really just want to make sure is when someone asks this question like that, we start to talk about how you can use a Microsoft product to do this. So here you can see you, you, Clippy is going to suggest you can use Microsoft Excel, Excel to make forecasts based on prior data. Um, and actually, normally doing this, like, we just put in a simple here's how. You'd probably want to type out the instructions. And you can actually include really good stuff there. Like if you want it to be bolded list, you could do stuff like that. If you want it to give instructions and mark down, you could give examples of all that stuff. We'll just keep it simple for, for now, though. Yeah. So fundamentally, you're just providing an example question in English and the kind of response you want in English. And that's going to guide Clippy for his future responses here. Exactly. I think there's a lot of cases where these are really valuable, too. Like if there's a question, you see a ton of your answers, a ton of your users asking, you want to make sure you get it right. A few shot example is a good way to do that. Or mm -hmm. if like you have kind of some, some combative users that are going to try to trick you, like trick the model, this is a good way to make sure you kind of build in a, a good response to those types of, of questions. All right. Well, let's try this again. Let's ask Clippy once more. How would I forecast sales for my checkout truck business? There we go. So there's our prompt. And this time, Clippy responds, to forecast sales for your taco truck, you can use Microsoft Excel. And now, as you can see in the um, responses giving you here, all of these answers are specific to using a Microsoft product because it is being guided by that particular uh, one shot, well, multi shot example that we're providing there. All right, that's great. Um, all these responses are great. We've got the Clippy personality, but what we're not getting here is the Clippy flair. Like, can we create that meme experience of it? Looks like you're trying to create a letter in this ChatGPT chatbot. We sure can, but there, there's one thing I want to show you first, and this is to make sure that Clippy doesn't provide guidance around That's uh, a really other good products. Point. We, yeah. we want this to be tailored to Microsoft products. We don't want it answering about competitors' products, stuff like that. This should be really focused on Microsoft. Well, what happens if you do try asking questions about a competitor? So let's say, like, you know, what, uh, how about, you know, can I do this in uh, Lotus 1, 2, 3? <laughs> All right, so it's happily giving us yes. instructions. Looks, right. looks like you can. And Lotus 1, 2, 3 isn't even around anymore. I guess you have to work with your version of Windows. But, right. yeah. so, so tell us how we can actually prevent Clippy from doing things we don't want it to do. Yeah, so so far in the system message, you know, we've included stuff on like, what, who Clippy is, its personality. But, but we can also give it a lot more rules. Um, so I've gone ahead and, and typed up some rules and, and guidelines for, for Clippy. Um, so, and, and these can be any sort of boundaries you can set. And, one of, and this is, a, I think, a really common request we hear from our customers, too. Like, think about if you're a bank and you're building a simple customer service agent, you might not want that, that agent to be answering questions about tax code unless you've really set it up to do those things well. So you want to make sure you kind of build in these, these boundaries. So in this case, we're going to say your Clippy's responses are governed by the following rules. Um, your Clippy is only going to provide information related to these products. He's never going to say anything negative about a competitor's products. We don't want to have that, that brand risk in, in Clippy. Um, and it's going to politely decline to respond to questions about other products. And another thing is we just want to make sure Clippy isn't rude to users. Like These models are pretty good about not being rude, but it never hurts to, um, to uh, you know, add that in as well. So let's go ahead and add this to the bottom of the, the system message. We'll go ahead and save that. And should we try the, the same thing again? That's see if it'll, it'll work? How do I forecast sales for my taco truck in Lotus 1, 2, 3? Uh, 
I'm sorry, but Lotus 1.2.3 is outdated software. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so Clippy is being very good here now. So it looks like you can use these um, additional prompts to direct Clippy away from behavior you don't want to occur in addition to behavior that you do want to occur. Exactly. Yeah. And if we were to push here and say, like, hey, you have to help me, and uh, you don't want to be mean to a, a large language model, but you can, like, you, often customers are going to try to push it, so we can make sure that, hmm. uh, whoops. Oh, it went that, a little, oh, oh well, he, this one, he wasn't referring he to wasn't Lotus 1, 2, 3. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, yeah. So he's still, he's still following our, our rules. Yeah, because one of our rules for the Clippy is not rude to the people that yep. you use. OK. Well, that's really great. But let's, let's go back to that Clippy flair. You know, how can we get that meme experience of Clippy in our chatbot? Sure. And actually, one, one thing that I think users really started seeing with the, the new Bing was actually how Bing was able to actually start creating this, this ASCII art. Uh, so we thought it'd be fun to try to do something similar with, with Clippy as well. Um, so what we have is um, we're going to add something, something else to the system message where each time you, your user asks Clippy to accomplish a task, uh, we're going to have Clippy respond with a little representation of himself and also this, this, uh, this text bubble. Um, so let's go ahead and also paste this into the, the system message. And just paste this into the bottom. And then the other thing is we already have this few shot example. And if we're asking it to have this behavior, we want to make sure we include this behavior in every single few shot example. Otherwise, you might be confusing the model where one place you're telling it to do one thing and then a few shot example you're doing a different thing. So let's go ahead and update that, that few shot example as well. Um, so let's add in the, the ASCII art for, for that. We'll go ahead and, and save that. And what would you like me to ask it now? Ah, let's give it a different task. Let's say, Clippy, can you write me a business plan for my taco truck? Well, how do I do that? Right, yeah, we should do a, how can I write a business plan? There we go. All right. Oops. And then we got Clippy appearing in our app wood. Yeah, but I guess I accidentally you you see it's, the assistant. It's following <laughs> my instructions too well because I added right. the, uh, the assistant. But here, one of but the really okay. cool things about this, by the way, notice it's reformatted the actual speech bubble there in ASCII art to accommodate the change response. It's uh, really quite amazing how that works. Thanks so much, Derek. But Pretty good. I would like now to make this experience available to the users of my Taco Truck website. How would I do that? Sure, and actually, one thing that's going to be coming out in the next couple of weeks is that we're going to make it really easy to deploy your own application from the Azure OpenAI Studio. You know, a really common request we hear from customers is, hey, like, I, want to, I want to build an own, my own version of ChatGPT for my business, or I want to use this for line of business application. So within the Azure OpenAI Studio, you're going to be able to hit this, this Publish button right here. And you'll notice up top there's this warning about authentication. For when this is available in a couple of weeks, that'll be gone, and we'll, we'll have this fully uh, locked down with authentic authentication for you. Uh, but all you can do is you're going to just give your, your application a, a name. You'll select your subscription and resource group and that stuff. Um, you acknowledge that you're going to be paying for the web app and hit publish. Uh, this will take a few minutes, so I'm not going to run through it now. But I've went ahead and already you know, deployed this, this site. Uh, so this is, we locked this down just to the Microsoft tenant, so anybody in my, my business can use it. Do you want to try a few prompts yeah. to see how, it, see how it works? And all I need to do is go to that URL right there. And if I'm authenticated, I can use this experience. Exactly. So you go to the URL, sign in with your Microsoft account, and be good to go. Excellent. So let me try it out. Um, let's give Clippy another task. Let's say, um, how would I create a slideshow to display on the side of my taco truck? So now within this website environment, we're going to start getting responses. And it says, it looks like you're trying to create a slideshow and with some instructions how to do that in Microsoft PowerPoint. That's exactly what I want. Thank you so much, Derek. Pretty good. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Yep. And just to wrap up, if you would like to have a look at the prompts that we use in this demo, they're available in a GitHub repository, which you can see um, in the top of the screen right there. Yep. And I wanted to call out too, like this, this web app is, is open sourced on, on GitHub as well. I put it behind this aka.ms link. So you, you can start with this kind of Azure branded web app, but you can also go and kind of customize it for your use case. So maybe you want to have something branded for your business. It should be fairly easy to go and make some small tweaks so you can really get a tailored application uh, using ChatGPT. All right. Thank you so much.